This is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This video lesson is going to look at RADFRAC and how we can use results from DSTWU to start our simulation. So I've set up a simulation with toluene, benzene, and cumene. My method that I've selected is the SRK, and I accepted the standard uh, binary interaction parameters. We have a simulation set up where I have a feed stream that is a mixture that's 40% benzene and 30% toluene and cumene. And we have previously run the DSTWU shortcut method to determine exactly what it is that we think is going to be our answer. And we found that the number of stages would be 11.2, the feed would be at stage 6.25, and so forth. Okay, so we've determined all of this information here. What we want to do in this lesson is look at using RADFRAC. Now, we had done the DISTL. I'm going to just remove that column right now. So I'll delete that block. And we're going to come in here, and for our columns, we want to look at RADFRAC. So I'm going to bring RADFRAC in here, and I really didn't mean to add two of them. Let me remove that one. I'll rename it. And I'm going to connect my stages, or my uh, feed streams. If I open up my RADFRAC block to begin looking at the input, uh, we have a choice here of doing equilibrium or rate-based. Equilibrium is the series of the mesh equations, the mass balances, energy balances, and the equilibrium relationships. Uh, the rate-based is going to be related to the mass transfer coefficients, and we're not going to be looking at that. So we're going to be doing the equilibrium calculations. We're going to put in our estimates from the DSTWU estimate, and in that one we came up with 11.2, so let's round up to say 12 stages. I want a total condenser, a kettle reboiler, um, doing this with just vapor and one liquid. I have, from my previous estimate, I actually know the reboiler duty came out to be 65,800 calories per second, and I had a reflux ratio of 0.96. So I'm using results that I had in the previous work. If I come to streams, it should allow me, there we go, I can put in the feed and I want to do the feed above stage 6 based on my DSTWU. So I have this as my first estimate. My pressure, I'm just going to do this all at one atmosphere. Okay, so at this point Looks like we're good to go. We can hit run and we can get our simulation to run. We want to look at the results and I want to be able to compare them to what I got from the DSTWU. I had left that one in there. And so I come down to results summary and I want to look at the streams. And I have named the bottoms and the distillate for the shortcut column or the DSTWU. Uh, bottoms and dist dash SC, and for the radfrac are just bottoms and distillate. The feed streams are identical, they're clones of each other. What we see is that my mole fractions, maybe we want to look at that one, they are similar, but they aren't quite the same between the shortcut and the radfrac. And that's to be expected, right? So what you're going to want to do is look at these and see if you're happy with these results. If it doesn't satisfy your needs, then you need to go in and modify your, um, excuse me, my RADFRAC specifications sheet, okay, and make any modifications there that you might see as appropriate. Maybe I 
feel like I should change the reflux ratio, maybe the reboiler duty. Let's look at the RADFRAC results page. We've looked at this for the DSTWU before, and now then we have our summary, what are our temperatures, how much duty am I need, gonna need for the condenser, etc. So I've got this summary here, and I also have my balance here so I can check and make sure that my mass balance did work, and I can look at the difference between input and output enthalpies. The split fraction allows me to look at that split fraction for each of my components from the inlet to the exit. Our goal here is to get a better design that truly matches the set of data that we would have. Um, this system isn't very far off of the shortcut because it is a very ideal solution. But I can do some things like use these plots. And you can either get it if you're in your results, you can get it from column design, or you can find it actually in the home. There's a series of pages like this also. But if I click on these, this will allow me to look at the temperature stage by stage, and I can see that it's fairly smoothly increasing okay, as I go across the tower. Now again, the cooler temperatures should be in the condenser, and the warmer temperatures should be in the reboiler. And I see that. Uh, I also could, let me close that. Come back to this. I can look at some others. I can look at compositions as I move through the tower, separation factors, relative volatilities. So I've got lots of different things that I can look at, and whether I want to choose to look at all of them or just some of them. And these are all being compared the way I set it up compared to toluene, so therefore it has a straight value of 1. This one is more than that. This one is less than that. So there are lots of things that you can explore. I encourage you to save your work right now and then just simply play with it and look at these various graphs and try and figure out what you can learn from those. So let's do one more thing so that we can learn more about our tower. And let's leave the column design page and come back to home. And let's do a sensitivity analysis. What this allows me to do is see how changing one variable affects other variables. So I want to set up a new, and whatever it wants to call it is fine with me. Okay, And this is going to give me the opportunity to introduce um, what variables I want to change. So I'm going to add a new variable. Variable 1 is active. So the variable I want to change, and you can choose almost anything. You can really play with these things. Typically, we either want like a block variable, which describes something to do with the block, um, or a stream variable, which is something to do with one of the streams. Maybe you're going to change the feed stream queue, something like that. A uh, block variable would be something like changing the location of the feed. So let's do that. So we'll just set up this my block I'm wanting to do it for radfrac the variable that I'm wanting to do and you can browse through here and choose whatever makes you happy okay um, and feed stage was what I was looking for and I want to do this for feed 2 is my feed stream okay now I've got 12 trays so I can choose between 1 and 12 OK, um, if you want to try every one of them, then set that as number matching the endpoint. Uh, or you could have you know, chosen to go by every other tray, something like that, whatever seems appropriate to you. OK, so I've got my blue check mark here. Let's come into the next screen. OK. So in this case, I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to make this be my product quality. 
that's what I want to evaluate. And I'm going to define this as, um, let's do the mole fraction, mole fraction in the distillate of the toluene. Okay, toluene was my light key. So that's going to be what I want to do. And then tabulate. On tabulate, I just usually just say fill variables. If you have really a whole bunch of stuff, you might want to do something different. And then say run. Now, this will vary on how long it takes to run, but you can now look at this and see your results curve. And you can choose to see what happens and make a choice based on what it was you were looking for in terms of product mole fraction or whatever else it was that you might have been considering. So this is pretty simple to use. Um, you might want to try doing this for maybe a different system or just play with different variable choices. So thank you very much for your time.